I don't know why these two guys are against the Prophet Muhammad. Well, I I actually responded in the chat and said, you, you're just lying. You know very well why we're against them because you've watched many of these streams. But here's our opportunity. Thanks, Iqbal, to talk about some of the reasons why we are against the Prophet Muhammad. I'll let you go first. Well, I'm going to I'm going to start with a little bit of the the pragmatic and worldly reasons why someone should be against the prophet, uh, quote unquote. I hate even saying the word prophet. So fake prophet. Um, one of the reasons is because his morals and standards of living are stuck in the seventh century of Arabia. Uh, it is it is it came out of a culture of um, uh, not being pleasant to women Um not being pleasant to your neighbor, um, violence and all of those, all of those horrible things. But this is what I'm just going to go off on a little tangent here and then I'll, I'll pull over, uh, let, let you finish out here, Thaddeus. But one thing that I find incredibly interesting is Muslims. A lot of times will say, look, Muhammad was a champion of women's rights. Muhammad just, he, you know, they used to bury, they used to bury their children. They would bury their girls They'd bury them. And yet, in their own sources, Muhammad marries a rich widow, works for her. She's a business owner, living on her own, running a business. Women aren't allowed to do that anymore in Islam. That is, that's not, that's not something that women are allowed to do. Not to mention that it is sanctioned as halal for men to beat their wives, no matter how hard they beat their wives, they are sanctioned, Quran 434, to beat their wives. It is halal for them to have and own slaves, and not only own slaves, they can have sex with their slaves, but not only can they have sex with their slaves whom they own, they can have sex with their slaves whom they own that are married to their husbands still. So there is legal, what we would consider to be, adultery within the religion. Also, the book says that you can divorce a child before her first period. You must wait three months, however, before, her, be, before she can remarry again after you because there's a chance that she might be pregnant. This is all before her first period. This is all before she has um, reach puberty that those moral compass laws are horrible pragmatically if the world was run by a religion and people who followed that religion who actually practice what they should and thank god that the vast majority of muslims are far superior morally to their prophet but that's why we preach against muhammad because he is one of the worst, if not the worst moral examples for anyone, anywhere of any time. And I will pass the mic over to you. Yeah. You know, this is a, a hard question in that there's so many different places we could go. Um, Mr. Truth has covered the moral angle. I'll just add one thing, and that's Aisha's words, that I have never seen a woman suffering as much as that of the believing woman. So Aisha herself says that Muslim women are treated worse than other women, yet this is elevating their status, apparently, according to our Muslim friends. Uh, like I said, I could go many different places, but I will go with the fact, why am I against Muhammad? I am against Muhammad because his words or the words attributed to him um, the words that he supposedly brought as revelation in addition. So I, I was referring to the Hadith first, and then to the Quran. These words are perhaps the most perfect antichrist religion. Now, what do I mean by that? Do I mean that, that Islam is pure evil in the stereotypical sense that, that Muslims are, are sacrificing kittens and, and, and making blood offerings to Satan. No, that's not what I mean at all. That kind of religion, not very attractive. That won't bring very many people. That is not a very, it is antichrist, but it's not a very good antichrist religion. Islam affirms a lot of the same moral teachings as Christianity. See, it affirms a lot of the historical facts that Christianity 
affirms. Now, granted, often the Muslim version of the story is corrupted and distorted, but, you know, they believe in the same basic stories. They, they have variations on them, but they believe in the same basic thing. They uniquely, among all people who are not Christians, believe that Mary was a virgin when she conceived Jesus. They uniquely, among all people, believe that Jesus was the Word of God, that he was a spirit from God. Uh, but, so there's a lot of attraction there. There's a lot that looks good in Islam. But here's the thing. Islam says there's just a couple things, just a couple things that you absolutely cannot believe. You cannot believe that Jesus died on the cross. You cannot believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And you cannot believe that Jesus was divine or that the Trinity is the nature of God. These are the core Christian beliefs. So it has enough truth to be attractive while perverting the exact nature of the gospel. And I'll add additionally, it also perverts the salvation message, the other half of the gospel, saying that you are saved by your works or by the arbitrary decision of Allah, but definitely not by faith. So that's why I am against Muhammad, because he has led billions of souls to hell. And I'd say that's a pretty good reason. <laughs>